We have uh, one of the teams on the committee uh, whose sole purpose is to look at the financing uh, of January 6th. It's just interesting to note that a lot of people came to Washington uh, by bus, by plane, uh, by chartered uh, uh, vehicles. Yeah. Uh, they stayed in hotels, motels, all of that. Somebody had to pay for it. And we want to look at whether or not uh, the paying for that participation was legal and whether or not it contributed to what occurred on January 6th. The chairman of the January 6th Select Committee, Benny Thompson, saying the committee will follow the money in an effort to uncover what exactly transpired in the lead up to the insurrection. His statement comes amid a damning report in the Washington Post that his committee is investigating the connection between a Trump campaign funded war room in the Willard Hotel where key allies plotted to overturn the results of the 2020 election and the Capitol riot. Joining us now, Congressman Ted Lieu of California, member of the Judiciary and Foreign Affairs Committees. He also served as an impeachment manager during Donald Trump's second impeachment. Um, Congressman, I wonder first your reaction to the new reporting of a war room, a command center. Uh, thank you, Nicole, for your question. Uh, let me first say that Chairman Thompson and the members of the January 6th Committee are doing a terrific job. And as a House impeachment manager, it was clear to me that multiple crimes occurred on January 6th. Many police officers were assaulted, and I'm pleased that the Department of Justice is going after those who assaulted and brutalized the police officers. But we also need to look at those at the very top, those who planned, executed, and encouraged this insurrection. And I hope not only is the January 6th committee going to get to the bottom of this, but that the Department of Justice is also looking at those at the very top. Donald Trump told um, the acting attorney general, Jeffrey Rosen, um, to simply declare the election corrupt and we will take care of the rest. So we included some of your colleagues um, on the other side of the aisle. Should they be subpoenaed? Uh, absolutely. And let me just note that it's nearly a year after the presidential election and Republicans still can't explain who purportedly stole the election nor how it was done because they're just making this up. The election was not stolen, and members of Congress who continue to say that falsehood should not be in Congress. What do you think happens next? The, the, the defiance of the congressional subpoena on the part of Steve Bannon was referred to the Justice Department. What do you think will happen? What do you think should happen? I hope the Department of Justice prosecutes Steve Bannon with this referral of the criminal contempt. My fear is that Steve Bannon will simply litigate this, appeal it all the way to the Supreme Court, and then two years later, we'll get a decision, and he can run the clock out. That's why I've introduced legislation that allows the House of Representatives to execute what's called inherent contempt. We could fine witnesses up to $100,000 for disobeying Sabina's, and then we'll see how Steve Bannon would like being fined $100,000. Do you have support among your colleagues to take that route if DOJ does not... Um enforce or prosecute Bannon? I believe I do. It's been co-authored by numerous members of Congress already. I also note that this does not need a Senate vote. This is simply a change to House rules, so we could execute it quite quickly. Let me talk about the Republicans who agree with you on this. Tragically, there are only nine. Um, but Liz Cheney, Brian Fitzpatrick, Anthony Gonzalez, Jamie Herrera, Butler, John Katko, Adam Kinzinger, Nancy Mace, Peter Meyer, and Fred Upton voted with every um, Democratic member of the House to hold Steve Bannon in contempt. Um, what do you make of the fact that there are only nine? Do you think, should the Republicans ever be in control again, that, that they won't care about congressional subpoenas? Uh, we're seeing the radicalization of the Republican base before our very eyes. Radical Republicans are dangerous. They are undermining democracy itself. And if we want to have Republicans in charge of who's going to decide Electoral College in 2024, that's a very dangerous prospect. And that's why it's so important that Democrats hold on to the House and Senate next year. 
Um, Adam Kinzinger and Liz Cheney are some of the harshest critics of their own party. Um, sometimes their attacks on Republicans are harsher than any Democratic member that I can find. Um, this is what Adam Kinzinger tweeted yesterday regarding Kevin McCarthy's threat to cut off all of Liz Cheney's um, financial support through her donor network. I'm not sure Democrats realize the seriousness of this threat. Most Republicans don't or they stay silent. This is how democracies get into trouble. It's not violence in the street. It's how the establishment responds. I know there's not much left to be surprised by when it comes to the Republicans, but when you see their treatment of Liz Cheney, one of the most conservative members of the House, what are your concerns moving forward? I mean, I, I, I ask this question of, of, of every Democratic member who comes on. Can you protect the country from a radicalized fringe in a single party way with, with the help of just Liz Cheney and Adam Kinzinger? We can if we get voting rights through. And that's why it's so important yeah. that we have to get the Freedom to Vote Act passed in the U.S. Senate. I would urge the U.S. senators to really look at this issue. It's fundamental core to our democracy. And with reference to Liz Cheney, it's remarkable that she is 99 percent in lockstep with all the issues Republicans support, except one, which is the truth that Donald Trump lost. And because she says that, you have Republicans who flip out and can't accept that the person that they slavish over lost the election, and it wasn't even that close. He got blown out in the popular vote. 